What's going on? This is Brandon with Fleet Feet, and today I'm going to walk you through some of the best Saucony running shoes that have released in 2024. Buckle up because there's actually a lot of shoes here. We don't just have one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven different Saucony running options for you all. And these shoes are ranging from daily trainers all the way up to race day picks. And while the Endorphin series is one of our favorites from Saucony here at the Fleet Feet review team, there is so much more to Saucony running shoes than just that line. So let's talk about it and let's get into all of these shoes. But before we go anywhere, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with continuing to support us as we put out new videos. Let's just start with Saucony's staple option, and that is the Ride 17, which is going to be a daily trainer from Saucony. The previous model of this shoe had Power Run in it, but this time around, it's got a nice new upgrade with Power Run Plus. The upper is made up of an engineered mesh upper, which is very plush and comfortable, and the shoe provides provides a nice wide and roomy toe box. And like I mentioned earlier, the midsole is made up of Power Run Plus, which is a bit of a softer and more responsive foam than that of Power Run. The last model of this shoe, the midsole was made up of EVA. Now this time it's made of polyurethane. Polyurethane is a bit bouncier, it's a bit lighter, and it's more responsive on foot. The drop of the midsole comes in at eight millimeters with 35 in the heel and 27 in the toe. The outsole is made up of traditional rubber cover Coverage, and one of our reviewers, Kate, actually really enjoyed the Ride 17 and how comfortable it was. Kate has been choosing this shoe lately for most of her easy and moderate runs. It's smooth for her, it's easy to run in, but it's not going to give her any special advantages like say a race day shoe or some of the other speed day options that we're gonna mention from Saucony. The weight of this shoe comes in at 9.9 .9 ounces or 280 grams for the men's model or 8.4 ounces and 238 grams for the women's model. The price of the shoe comes in at $140 which is pretty comparable to a lot of other daily trainers out there right now. Moving on to another shoe that's on its 17th model, the Guide 17, whereas the Ride was a daily trainer, this one is a stability daily trainer. This shoe is going to be a little bit firmer, it's going to have a bit of a wider base, and it's going to treat to a lot of stability runners' needs. But there is a new era of stability coming in, and Saucony is at the forefront of it. Saucony has introduced some new stability technology. They've gotten rid of hollow tech and they've actually introduced a new technology for stability called center path technology. The upper is a mesh upper. It has a very snug and locked in feel to it. It is pretty wide in the toe box and in the midfoot. You can actually tell that I had to cinch up the laces pretty good on these shoes to get a nice fit. It does have a nice padded heel collar and the tongue is gusseted but it just lacks that premium feel that you're gonna get in some of the other up-tempo or race day options. Now, the midsole is made up of Power Run, not Power Run Plus like we mentioned in the Ride 17. This is just normal Power Run, which is that EVA-based foam. It's going to be a little bit firmer and it is going to be more stable. And like we mentioned, this shoe has center path technology in it, which is made up of three fundamental ideas. The first one being that it has a nice wide base to the shoe, which is going to create more enhanced stability. The shoe also has some nice higher sidewalls, which is going to cradle the foot in a little bit more. So it's going to create a more stable ride and it's gonna guide you through a little bit nicer. And on the medial side of the foot, there is some additional foam here. You can see how it kind of protrudes and it sticks out. It is also a bit denser. And this dense foam is actually designed to create an even wear pattern for those who tend to roll inward as they land. As for the outsole, it actually has pretty minimal rubber coverage and it's pretty targeted in areas around the toe and some areas in the heel. And I could think of two reasons why Saucony decided to do this. Well, they wanted to target the areas where a runner needs a little bit of extra support and they know that there's gonna be extra wear in the shoe in those areas, especially for a stability runner. And it just helps to save weight and make sure that the shoe is really lightweight. And the Guide 17 is pretty light in weight. It's actually lighter than that of the Ride 17. 
One of our stability reviewers, Spencer, who actually pronates, found that the stability frame of this shoe is really strong. It kept his momentum moving forward and it was really easy for him to keep rolling through his stride. And for one of our other reviewers, Heather, she can actually notice that guidance on foot in a good way. From strike to toe off, it really just created that nice smooth transition. Like I mentioned, this shoe is a little bit lighter and the shoe comes in at 9.4 ounces or 266 grams for the men's model and 8.1 ounces or 229 grams for the women's model. And the price of this shoe is going to be the same as the Ride 17 at $140. But if $140 is a little bit out of the price range for you and you're looking for something that is a little bit more budget friendly, a little bit more lower profile, a firmer option with a little bit more of a responsive ride, and you don't need stability, look no further than that of the Saucony Kinvara 15, which is more of a low profile and budget daily trainer from Saucony. Don't mistake budget for making this shoe not a very high quality one. There is a very strong following of those who love the Kinvara year after year and keep coming back to it, and here's why. Well, for one, the shoe is incredibly lightweight, one of the lightest options here from Saucony. The upper is made up of a nice breathable mesh upper and it fits really well and true to size. It's not as airy as last year's version but it actually improves a lot from a lockdown fit perspective. And the midsole is made up of that power run which is the similar foam that you can find in the guide and it is made up of EVA. This foam is a little bit firmer feeling but it is going to be much more responsive than that of the guide 17. So if you're looking to pick up the pace in the shoe and run a little bit faster the Kinvara 15 is a good option. The drop of the shoe is pretty minimal at four millimeters with only 29 millimeters in the heel and 25 in the forefoot. And moving on to the outsole, there actually isn't that much rubber coverage here. It's only a little bit in the heel and a little bit in the toe. And they use what Saucony is calling XT900 rubber, which is a pretty minimal rubber coverage padding but our team really didn't find any issues with slippage or traction issues. And this shoe is a perfect shoe for one of our reviewers, Nate. Nate is a trail runner, but he absolutely loves minimal shoes and firmer options out on the roads. And Nate was actually pleasantly surprised to find a shoe that hasn't been following the similar trend of higher stack options and more cushion rides and more expensive foams. He was just looking for something that is bare bones structured, a little bit firmer and lower stack profile. And he really found that in the Convara 15. And he basically found that the Convara 15 proves that not every shoe needs to be a soft and mushy one. He enjoyed how dialed in this shoe was. It's quite smooth, it's lightweight, and he enjoyed how firm it was. And like I mentioned, this shoe is really light in weight with a women's model at 6.2 ounces or 175 grams, or a men's model at seven ounces and 198 grams. This is going to be a cheaper option than that of the Ride and the Guide, coming in at $120. Moving on, we have the Hurricane 24. Now, Saucony actually decided to put a pause on production for this shoe for a few years, but now it is back with its 24th version. It's a stability daily trainer. It has a nice high stack. It is pretty cushioned, and it was one of the most surprising updates for our team in 2024. This shoe has a nice mesh upper, and the team actually found that it fit true to size. There was really no issue across the board with sizing or fit. The real story here is in the midsole, and it's kind of dual density, but not really. So the way that they've decided to design Designed this shoe was to put Power Run PB in the inside of the midsole. So for those who don't know what Power Run PB is, it's the same foam that could be found in the Endorphin Speed 4 and in the Pro 4. It's a very responsive, energetic, and fast foam in the Endorphin line. And you can tell that this white area here is the PB, which is very soft and responsive. And that's actually what your foot is landing on. So you get that nice, soft, cushy feeling. But to create that stability, they've wrapped the shoe around in Power Run, which is a more firm and stable EVA. So you get a nice blend of both a faster, more responsive and soft Power Run PB, and then you've got that EVA wrapped around it, which is going to be a little bit firmer, 
a little bit more stable and is going to create a nice guide for your stride. This shoe also has center path technology in it, similar to that of the Guide 17. So if you didn't really like the Guide and you're looking for a bit of an upgraded version to the Guide and you want something with Power Run PB in it, you want something more energetic, but you still need a nice stable ride, then the Hurricane 24 might work best for you. The outsole is made up of a lot of rubber coverage here. It's not quite a full rubber coverage, but you can tell that there's quite a bit of it. And that is intentional to support some areas of the foot where there might be a little bit more wear or tear. But overall, the ride and performance of the shoe definitely felt pretty premium and it had a nice soft feeling to it. And one of our reviewers, Kate, actually found that the Hurricane feels soft and thick on the run. She got a bit of that compressive feeling but it's not overly squishy for her. She found that it offers quite a bit of protection from the road and it's comfortable from a variety of paces. Now, the only thing about this shoe is that it is a little bit more on the heavy side. If that's something that you can get past, then I'm sure this shoe will work best for you. When I was out on the roads in this shoe, I didn't really notice the weight. I didn't really think it was too big of a deal, but the weight does come in at 9.8 ounces or 277 grams for the women's model and 10.6 ounces or 300 grams for the men's model, making it one of the heavier options that we've talked about thus far. And this shoe is going to be $20 more than that of the Guide 17, so it is going to cost around $160. But again, that makes sense because of the more premium technology with the Power Run PB in there. Next, we're gonna talk about the Triumph 22, which is a neutral long run day shoe from Saucony. And this was supposed to be one of the biggest and most exciting updates of 2024. And this is the one our team projected to be one of the more exciting ones and the one that we were really, really excited to put on our feet. And why were we so excited? Well, this shoe was getting the full treatment of Power Run PB in the entire midsole of the shoe. But what we actually found was this is the one shoe from Saucony that actually just has a little bit more room for growth. The upper is made up of an engineered mesh upper, but it just felt really big for me. The sizing and the last of this shoe was pretty spacious in the toe box and it was just ran a little bit too long for me. But if you're worried about whether a shoe is going to fit best for you, you can go get your foot scanned, go through the fit ID process and the outfitting experience at a local Fleet Feet store and they'll be able to find out which shoe is gonna fit best for you. And I wasn't the only person to have these issues. Across the board, our team did find that the shoe was just a little bit too wide. But if you're someone who actually has a wide foot and you're looking for a wider option, then the Saucony Triumph might be a good pick. And like we mentioned before, the midsole of this shoe is getting that full Power Run PB treatment, which is the same foam that you can find in the Endorphin Speed 4 and in the Pro 4. But the actual midsole of this shoe is pretty firm and it has a really wide base to it. We had no issues with outsole coverage. There was quite a bit of it and there was no issues with any traction or stability out on the roads. And one of our reviewers, Mandy, actually was able to sum this one up pretty nicely. And she said that this shoe kind of feels like it has a bit of an identity crisis. She doesn't know where it fits or why it's really in the line. It has a bit of a thick and tall stack of foam, but it doesn't feel that cushioned or energetic. And the weight of this shoe for the women's model comes in at 8.8 .8 ounces or 249 grams or 10.1 ounces or 286 grams for the men's model. And the shoe comes in at $160, which is similarly priced to that of the Hurricane. And drum roll please, but these next few shoes that we've got for you all are really exciting and come from the Endorphin line, which is, let's be honest, it's probably one of the more exciting lines from Saucony and we're just really excited to show you all it because this year it got a few really nice updates. So let's get into it. First up is the Endorphin Speed 4. And this shoe year after year is one of the best speed and tempo day shoes of 2024. It's a great shoe for tempo runs, 
It's good for long run days. It's good for days when you wanna pick up the pace. You're looking for a responsive shoe. It's kind of that do it all shoe that can just do so many different things for you. It can be a great race day alternative as well if you're not someone who's looking to spend even more money on race day shoes and you don't need a carbon fiber plate. The upper is really dialed in. It is quite breathable. It is made up of an engineered mesh and our team really didn't have any issues with fit. We also found that the shoe was quite airy, it's quite light, and it is very breathable on foot. And the midsole, like we've mentioned earlier in this review, is made up of Power Run PB, which is a Piba based foam. Piba is the foam that's being used in a lot of super shoes and race day shoes out there right now. So you are getting top of the line premium midsole technology. And not only that, but as from the first model all the way up to the fourth model, it has a flexible plastic plate in this shoe. And it continues on with a technology called speed roll technology, which just creates a nice geometric pattern here in the midsole for a nice fluid ride. The drop of the shoe comes in at eight millimeters, so it is a pretty aggressive drop with 36 millimeters of stack in the heel and 28 in the toe. And the outsole this year has a new and improved lattice design outsole rubber and it is really tacky. It's nice and strong, it's durable, it still feels nice and lightweight. While Heather wasn't the biggest fan of the Triumph, she was a big fan of the Speed 4. And she actually said that Saucony did a great job of giving the shoe some thick cushioning without taking away any of that responsiveness. She planned to test this shoe out on an easy run so she can really get a feel for the ride but she actually found that the shoe was just pushing her forward into faster and faster paces. So she just decided at a certain point, why not just let loose, let it rip, and see how fast she can go in the shoe, and she really enjoyed it. And the women's model of the shoe actually comes in at 7.2 ounces or 204 grams, or a men's model at 8.2 ounces or 232 grams. So it is a pretty lightweight option. And you can get this shoe for only $170 for being one of the best speed day shoes and tempo options or do it all options, whatever you wanna consider it right now on the market, $170 is actually a pretty good bargain. And now let's move on to the last shoe on our list and that is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4. The Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 has a few really nice updates to the shoe and it feels revamped from that of the third model. This is a great race day option if you're looking to race anywhere between the 5K all the way up to the marathon. The upper is made up of a booty constructed upper and the tongue is really stretchy. This shoe is also very light, it is very airy, and it's very breathable from an upper perspective. Now the midsole of this shoe is actually made up of two different types of foams. The first one being Power Run PB, which wraps around the entirety of this shoe, similar in concept to that of the Saucony Hurricane, which is still a very fast and lightweight moving option and it is the foam that's used in the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, but this shoe now has Power Run HG in the footbed of this shoe, so you get a nice responsive landing still. And the midsole has a more firm and stiff feeling carbon fiber plate in here for a more responsive toe off. Much like the qualities of the Speed 4, the Pro 4 also has speed roll technology in it. So it has that nice geometric feeling where it just rolls you through your stride really nicely. And on the back of the shoe, the outsole is made up of that lattice designed outsole, which is tacky. It is really strong rubber outsole and it's going to be durable for a lot of race day options. And Mandy, again, just really enjoyed the Pro 4. She found that this was a shoe that was just disappearing on foot for her in all of the best ways. For her, each run was smooth, it was bouncy, it was comfortable, and she found that this shoe was just effortless on foot. And as a race day option, this one is really light and one of the lightest shoes from Saucony. The shoe actually comes in at 6.5 ounces or 184 grams for the women's model and 7.5 ounces or 212 grams for the men's model. With all of this premium technology, a carbon fiber plate, two different foams, a nice lightweight race day option, this shoe is going to cost $225. And if you're wondering whether this race day shoe or other Saucony shoes in general are for you, you can go check out our full reviews right here on YouTube or on the written blog at fleetfeet.com. But let us know what review or roundup you wanna hear about next. Leave that in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you.